<laughs> well, welcome back, my fantastic artistic friends, to Painting with Master Temple with me, Dad. Got the old flat cap back on, got a big old cardigan on, because it's, it's turned into a nice cold day again. Right, so we've got a big black canvas up here, and it's actually a canvas board. I don't like using these canvas boards, but I had it lying about. In fact, uh, I painted it black in black primer and allowed that primer to dry completely and I just had it stashed away. I really didn't really pay no attention to it. And, uh, as I've been beating the brushes over past episodes, some parts of um, the, um, the paint thinner I've, I've landed on this and it's created a nice little effect. So I'm gonna try and utilize that. And uh, so I've coated this now dry canvas in a thin layer of liquid clear, which is basically a, um, thin oil that will dry eventually but it allows to blend up here and I've, I've coated the whole thing in uh, several different uh, transparent colours and if all goes well we'll get a nice looking um, dazzling kind of painting okay I really do like these ones so fan brush time okay into some really thick titanium white paint these are Windsor and Newton's Winton colours okay so thin paint up here thick paint down here okay now I'm gonna start off here just about uh, about there okay and I'm just gonna swirl in okay and just let the brush swirl and jiggle and dance and it'll pick up all the different wonderful colors that are on the canvas now you can do any kind of colour as long as it's transparent and what we mean by transparent is if if it appears dark and black on the canvas that's tra more transparent you know that's that's about as good as we're gonna get as good as what we want really okay now this white paint is a uh, is an opaque colour which means we can't really see through it we can't see the black canvas underneath it and uh, that's why you, you know we can use this white straight onto the top of the transparent color the black color the black primer that's already been put on and allowed to dry make sure it is dry before putting any uh, thin oil on top of there or he'll be in a right state you'll be in a right mess okay and again start down here let's, let's, let's put in some paint and then jiggle 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 just like this Okay, and just coat the whole, whole canvas with these awesome looking swirly effects. Okay, now the little blemishes that are on there from allowing the, uh, the paint thinner to hit unbeknown to me at the time, I've created nice little effects and uh, this kind of works to our advantage, okay. So, in normal times, I'd uh, probably use this as a uh, probably a practice canvas if I'd ruined it. But uh, we don't really ruin anything. We can work with anything, really, can't we? Once you once you get a bit of practice under your belt, under your black belt, those who know know, okay. Under your belt, once you get a bit of practice under your belt, you can really work with anything. You really can. Okay, let's wipe the brush. Get a bit more white paint over onto the other side. So start down here. This is where the bright light's gonna be, down at this uh, this part here. That's where we want the brightest part. And we'll just work out, jiggle the brush, really get to the end. Now, I, I, I do paint on canvas boards from time to time. They're not too bad nowadays. There used to be a time when they were really bad and they'd break apart, but um, now they're not too bad, but they can, they do have the tendency to absorb the thin oil that you put on top that we need to blend colour with up here. They can, they can still do that, and that's why I don't really like working with them as much, but they're all right now, they're all right. If you can't get all the canvases, and sometimes we can't, can't get to the shops, can't, you know waiting for the delivery man of the next batch of canvases to come. Okay. Less of my woes. Less of my woes. Right, just, just jiggle like that. All the way down there. 
Okay, see we've got beautiful yellows, blues, crimsons, all sorts in there. Like that. Now, fun time. Okay, take a big dry brush. Okay, and I'm going to start in here. And if you can hear some tip tapping, it's basically raining. So this is raining on the, the roof. Okay, I can't do all about that. Okay, and all I'm going to do is just churn all this lot up. Just churn it up. Okay, start at your light spot, which is just here, just below horizon, just below halfway. Start at the light spot and then work out. And I'm only basically using the top corner of the paintbrush, just that very top corner as a swirling around, just like that. Just swirl it, let it dance, let it merge all these colours together, and we're going to get such a wonderful coloured sky. Just work it outwards, work it out, work it out, just like that, and it'll come alive. It's so simple, this. This method is just so simple. Right to the top, sneak in there, there we go. Okay, pick up a bit of paint, just hit it against the leg of the, the easel, and then start again on this side. Saves cleaning the brush, you see. Now, that is quite fun, cleaning the brush. It can be kind of time consuming, especially when we're filming for YouTube, filming for you guys. Okay. So I'll only do that if I really need to. Okay, just swirl that up, swirl that up, swirl right to the top. Look at those lovely colours all coming alive now. All there, nice and soft, nice and soft, there we go. Okay, and then we we'll just blend all this together, gently come across. If you've got a little bit too much paint on your paintbrush, beat it again, but just bring it all together, fluff it up, tease it, there. Look at that for a sky. How crazy is that, eh? How crazy is that? Okay, just work that up there. There we go. So we've got a lovely looking sky there. Okay, I will wash this brush. And shake off the excess. Knock it against the easel, and because we've got liquid clear up here, we'll <laughs> we'll dry it against the paper towel or against your leg, <laughs> something like that. Right, so that's a nice little sky already done. Now you could use this for any kind of scape, seascape, uh, a landscape, or even a space painting. I've done that in the past. Not on this channel, but we have done that in the past. And one that we may revisit again, because I do like space painting. They give you so much freedom. Okay, so I'm going to pick up another fan brush. Let's take a, a number... Eight. This is number eight fan brush. I'm going to go into some brown paint here, some Van Dyke brown and a bit of burnt sienna. Maybe even grab a little bit of crimson. Just mix them on the brush so we get a variant of colours. And in the far away, we can see some headlands. Okay, so far away, we're just going to put in some headlands or hills or whatever. Just there, like that. Maybe that comes down, I don't know, all the way across. Maybe it goes up there. We don't know. We don't care. Don't know. And then just bring that down. Don't overwork your paint on these headlands, these hills. This far away, far away land. We want a little bit of definition, a bit of colour in this. <laughs> There we go, bring it all the way down to the horizon. Where is the horizon line going to be? Possibly about there. So bring it all the way there. Like that. Okay, now I'm going to take this tiny little... Uh, made out of pony hair, I believe. It's probably synthetic, actually, but it's, it's meant to replicate pony hair. Nice and soft. Nice and soft. And then just gently go over that. Okay, if you've not got one of these brushes, you use a normal 
use your fan brush if you want if you've cleaned and dried it and make sure it is dry make sure it is really dry because paint thinner and liquid clear have a really bad reaction to each other of course it's used to to clean brushes with is paint thinner and the oil paint the oils that are are on the thin oil the uh, liquid clear will just start to disband and and, uh, and move and yeah right there we go a bit more darker color now so i'm going to add a tiny bit of phthalo blue to that and i'm just going to add that just down here just tap in a little bit of dark and just down there work your way across and then again back with this this uh this pony hair brush just tap the base a little bit just work on that okay and then just give it a little fluff give it a little tease okay that is our headland or hill or mountain or whatever whatever we're going to see far across the landscape now uh, what we're going to have i think we'll have some water in this just some water and uh, maybe a little bit of a coastline so we're overlooking like a lock or a, um, a fjord or i don't know you know okay so we'll just make it up as we go along don't we i really have no idea what i was doing you know with this one sometimes i have a bit of an idea but 99 percent of the time i just i just go with it okay so some white paint and all i'm gonna do is just very gently start in the middle and just zoom down okay it doesn't matter if your water line's not straight but the these lines must be relatively straight keep these uh Keep this direction pretty good because if you go on at an angle, it's going to look like the water is going to stream off the edge, and we don't want that. It's wet enough outside, we don't want it wet in here as well with this water running away from us. <laughs> yes, you've got to be a bit crazy in here. Maybe this hat's a bit tight. Remember the Christmas paintings we did? Boy, that was a that was pretty tight. That that Santa hat I had on, but fun, but fun. But fun. So work your way across, all the way across, okay. And then take your big dry brush. Okay, is this it? Looks like it. Make sure, make sure it's dry, folks. Okay, and then just pull down. Okay, and some of that white colour will pick up with the under colour that we've got on there. The magentas, the the Indian yellows, the the browns. We'll put a bit of brown down there. You see. Yeah. the blues okay look at that okay and then just gently gently just take it all the way across very light whisper light feather light and that will give us a nice mysterious watery effect there we go okay now we need to work on a i think we need to work on a little water line out there Okay, there's a bit of an itch on the back there. Right, so, bit of liquid white. Now, I'm going to take this liquid white, pop it up there, and take a bit... Rogue, rogue brush there, I don't know how that got there. Rogue brush hair there. Sometimes your brushes do malt. I don't know what you're doing on the palette knife, though. Okay, so I've mixed a bit of titanium white and liquid white together just to thicken the, uh, the 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 liquid white up okay now start start the brightest part part you want make sure the blade of your knife is parallel to the base of the painted put the heel on the canvas and then push into the canvas and then cut okay and that'll give you a nice straight line nice and straight now if we're coming around a corner or coming towards us, a bit more paint. Make sure that your knife is still straight, but relax on the front pressure of the knife. So bring back the heel towards you, if, if that makes sense. It'll make sense if you're regular do, regularly doing this. 
Okay, so we've got one side done. Okay, let's let's go on to the other side. Okay, so this looks like a natural spot to come up that way. So we'll probably start here. Okay, and work your way up, but relax on pressure. Keep it nice and straight, parallel to the base of the canvas. And then just bring that together there like that. And there we have it. We've got a nice straight water line. Well, straight as the uh, the land that we've painted is. Okay. Now, if one's a bit too bright, you can actually go across it and rub it away. Or pull it into the paint. Or if it's nothing that you like at all, you can just just blend it into the to the painting. Zip it off or blend it into the painting. Okay. Right, now I think we need some waves on here, just little gentle waves. Where's this gonna go? Okay, so a bit of white paint, okay, on the old palette knife, the big old putty knife. And we're gonna start up here. I think we'll start off with one. We're not gonna have big crashing waves. I love big crashing waves, but we're not gonna have that today. Um, we'll just have a nice gentle, just a gentle, it might not even be a C, it might be a, might be a lake, I don't know. Lock. So push. And you can see you get a distinct, clean, crisp edge. But you also get a nice feathering effect. What I mean by feathering, that's just a word I've made up, by the way. It's not a true art term. Is you get a clean, crisp cut and you get this blended part. Now, with that blended part, we need that. That's important. And we also need that front part of the... Uh, the uh, the line as well, the wave. Right, now let's work again on another one. So start off here, and then just work your way back. Applying pressure, applying more pressure. There, get wider as it comes towards you. What I mean by that is it's narrow up here, and it's wider down here. Okay, jiggling about a bit because water's constantly on the move, even though if it's if it's still and flat. There we go. I don't want to push too hard because uh, here's a canvas board. These this this easel that I built doesn't really like canvas boards. So right, one more. We'll have another one. Okay, and we'll start back here. And again, we'll just come across. Just there, like that, all the way across, and then get that out to nothing. Okay, now we may have another one yet, I don't know. I don't know what we'll do. I wish I did. Somebody tell me what to do. Somebody please tell me. Right, let's grab a fan brush. Let's get one without no paint on it. This will do. Okay. Okay, with little fan brush. In fact, let's get a littler one, actually. I have one somewhere, come on. This is a little baby one, this is a number two. Okay, number two fan brush, and I'm just gonna grab this white paint, and just feather it back ever so slightly. Just grab and pull a little bit at a time. Think of the wave, but don't pull it into the next line that you did. Just pull it, just like that. And you start to create a watery effect. There, like so. Yeah, all the way down till we get down into this area here. Yeah. Just like that, that easy. Just pull, just pull from the front of the wave to the back. Front of the wave to the back. If you get a bit too much white paint on, don't worry about it. Keep working it and it'll go away. Keep working this and it'll be as smooth as silk. Okay, let's go on to the next one. Okay, so just, if you need to, wipe your brush off. Okay, I'm just going to try and sneak in there. In fact, it'd be better with a little flat... Uh, I've got a little flat brush. I have somewhere, but I don't know where I put it. Mm, 
will that sneak in or is it too splayed out? We'll try it. We'll try it. We'll try this one. Just just a little tiny couple of hairs. And just bring that across. Mm, not sure. Not sure. If you don't like it, go back to how it was. If it ain't broke, why change it, Dan? Come on. If it ain't broke, why try and fix it? Sometimes, as artists know, we can tinker and tinker and tinker and break stuff until it's completely and utterly not the picture that we wanted. Okay, so we'll just bring that back there. And a bit more here. Keep it nice and straight. Think of the water rushing in. Like that. All right. Okay. We're getting somewhere, aren't we? We're getting somewhere. We're getting somewhere. And in 10 minutes, Mr. Christopher Collects is on his uh, YouTube. So I want to be done for then. So I can go watch him do some fantastic coin hunts. So uh, better bet. Gonna move on and get this one finished. If you're a coin collector, let me know. I know a lot of my fantastic friends from the coin collecting community have come across and started to watch me paint, which is amazing. It's amazing. How, how do you convert somebody to do another hobby or, you know, watch another hobby? There. There we go. There. There, so nice one. So now we've got this nice little, nice little ripples just there. Okay, so I think we need a little bit of a reflection down here into the, uh, into the, uh, what, what would possibly be sand. Okay, so I'm going to take a, uh, I'm going to take another fan brush, a bit bigger. Yeah, this one. And again, back to the white paint, because we've primed the canvas, you know, condition the canvas, we can do this. Okay, so go there, but leave a little dark line between, between the, uh, the, 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 the reflection on the wet sand and your wave, you want a little shadow. So don't paint all the way up to that white line. Just leave a little bit of a line. And however big it is, that's all right. We might have big shadows, we might have small shadows. Okay, so just pull that down. All the way down like that. Less paint on the brush, less pressure, as we're working as way from the light source. Yes, we are. Maybe go all the way across. Okay, I'm gonna flip the brush over, okay? I'm not gonna load it again. And I'm just gonna pull straight down, straight down. Just like that. You could do this with a big brush if you wish. If you want to do it quicker, you can do it with a tiny brush. Take your time at it. Okay, now we've got it. Right, so speaking of big brushes, where are you? There. Okay, so back in here. So I'm angling the brush slightly, but I'm pulling in the same direction straight down. Pull it straight down and across. Straight down and across we will go. Straight down. Just bring all those brush strokes together. There, 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 there. Okay. Now, don't distort. Don't distort your little wave. But what we want to do is just bring all this together and give it that wet look. That wet, watery look. Okay, how's that looking? Huh, looks like it could drop straight off an edge. Right. Okay. Um, should we put another wave in? I think we should. I think we should. Let's really make it. Let's really make it zig. Okay. Why not? So, start there. And then work your way back. Work your way back. You know we were going to put another wave in, didn't you? You know we are going to put another ripple in. 
there like so okay so now we've got that now we've got that back to the fan brush and then just grab some of this and just gently tweak this back just pull pull right over your reflections that will push your reflections down into the canvas as well That's it. We're getting somewhere. Swirl this off. Swirl this off. Do we need another? Possibly so. Possibly so. I'm just going to tweak this a little bit. Right. Let's get the knife again. So you'll make friends with the knife. I've gone into the small knife and I've gone into the, that liquid white and titanium white mix okay now where we want some ripples we could add a, a few going back so i'm just using the heel of the knife and i'm just putting a, a, a few highlights where the where the uh, the light source is really catching there put one wherever you want okay be free with this be free take it back Make sure your knife is nice and straight. There, like so, down there. Okay, now maybe, maybe, do we want some stones and something down here? Do we? What do you think, guys? Do we need a stone or something down there before we finish off? Let me know. Let me know now. Before we decide on a stone, just take that little gentle brush and just lightly go over it again, just to set these down. Try not to distort it too much, but just enough, just enough to settle it, settle the paint down. Now you see here, I've got, you know, lines there that look uniform. I don't like too much uniform in, uh, in a painting. So I'm gonna add just another one just there. And that should, in fact, if we join them up, Break it up slightly, you know, make it a little bit more unique. Okay. There we go. And then just settle that down there. Like that. Take all that back. That off there, like that. So you keep your brush stroke straight. Your water's going to be straight. Okay. What do we say? Yes to a, to a nice, uh, to a nice uh, couple of stones up here. Okay, so what? let's take some dark colour, okay, a lot of dark colour, so I've got uh, blue, tiny bit of black in there, and brown, okay, so that's on the big large filbert brush, what I'm going to do is take the palette knife, take some of this thin white paint that we made, take that dark colour, and mix it in with that white, okay, then we've got, so we've got like a thin, a thin highlight colour there. Wipe the knife off. So I've got black, brown and blue, both sides of the filbert. Okay, and I'm going to take it through one side of that thin, white, well, lighter colour paint, that highlight paint. So I've got light on one side and dark on the other. Okay, now we can come up here. All right, and just in one stroke, can put a couple of stones, the highlights and the shadows in one go. Just in one go, just there like that. A couple of boulders. Like so. Yeah. A couple of stones that that's it up there, maybe a little tiny one there and there. Maybe we've got one. Popping his head out of the water. Maybe he's got a friend there as well. There, like so. Three of them there. Three of them. Okay, set you down. Okay, so back to the... Uh, uh, <laughs> come here. Has anyone else run out of space? Brushes and time. Okay. 
So just pull some of that colour down. Pull it down, okay? Just pull that straight down and then gently across again. Gently across. And then what we can do is take the palette knife, which one have I got? The, the little one. I like the little one. A, a, a really good friend of mine gave me this for my 40th birthday. He told me to go away and paint. I think I've told you this before. He told me to go away and paint, and I did do. And a lot of people liked the painting, so I carried on painting. And I really, really enjoy and paint with this knife more than anything else, you know. It is it's such a pleasure. Okay, so down here, it cleans my palette. It's even tight. Used it, I've used it to tile my bathroom as well, put the grout in sometimes. There we go. Right, so there we have it. Let's maybe twinkle some of these back a little bit. Got a couple more little highlights here and there. Wherever we sh should be, that's exactly where they should be. Maybe take where we didn't take it off the canvas we'll take it off there like that and then just fetch that round like so so it does actually right you know what's next signature time so if you made it this far into the uh, the painting video thank you very much i really do appreciate it if you're not subscribed to my channel because a whopping 70% of people who watch these videos are not subscribed to the channel, which is which is mind-numbing. It's free to do. All you've got to do is click that subscribe button. Click the bell as well, and then you'll be notified when we do a bit of a painting. Usually every Sunday morning, but that could change, you know. And uh, if you have liked this video, give it a big thumbs up. And leave me a nice comment as well. I love reading your comments. It's, it really is heartwarming. Okay, so I'm just going to sign this one there. That's it. Swill the brush off. I hope you've enjoyed this one. Let me know how we've done. And until next time, you take care of yourself. Stay safe. Happy days.